Good morning everyone. Today I thought I would give you a closer look at what's going on inside of my 2004 Ford E250 extended cargo van. Hold on. Let me get cleaned up first. Now that feels about 10 times better. Haven't showered yet today, but sometimes a little dry shave in the morning, it's enough to make you feel just a little bit more fresh. And of course, you know, deodorant and all those other things that make you smell kind of pretty. All right, let's dive into what's going on inside the van. In this video, we're not gonna cover insulation and all that other kind of stuff. I'm gonna make a total video for that other one, but let's take a quick look. Let's start off with saying that I started this van life adventure with just the bare necessities. First thing I needed was my van. <laughs> the rest of it was just simple and makeshift and I built things as I went. So if you're looking at getting into van life, that is my total 100% suggestion. Unless you have the cash to back up doing a freaking huge build, if you don't, grab the bare necessities you need and just get started. So let's take a look at the first thing that most people are gonna need, and that's gonna be the bed. My, hi Disco. This is my little sidekick, my companion Disco. If you're new to the channel, he's kinda like the star around here, aren't you buddy? All right, let's take a look at the bed and how I built things. The bed build is pretty basic, pretty simple. For a mattress on the top, you wanna show them bud? For a mattress on the top, it's a simple four inch piece of foam on the bottom, which I got from like a Canadian box store for like $60. And the top is a four inch piece of memory foam, which as you can tell, I had to cut it so it fit the size of my bed. But I got the memory foam piece from, from Costco and it's been super great. The only thing, the only negative thing I got to say, sorry, the sun's a bit bright. The only negative thing I got to say about a memory foam mattress is that in the winter, that piece of memory foam gets freaking rock hard. <laughs> it's insane. Like if I get in the van on a cold day, that thing is just like sleeping on like a rock. And it's funny when you get up in the morning because your little area that you're sleeping is super soft and snug. And then the second you move your elbow over to a spot you're not sleeping, it's like a rock. All right, let's take a look at the, uh, the construction of the bed. Let's take a little bit of a look underneath on how the frame is built. It's got a two by four on the bottom, another two by four on the top, and the braces are all cut to the same size. There's four braces along, and I got this same piece on the other side, and all I did was screwed it to the three quarter inch sheet of plywood, and it's been rock solid. It's been super great, easy to build, and I didn't touch any tools at all. Home Depot did all my cuts for me, and if you wanna see that in a little bit more detail go back and watch my how to build a stealth van in one day video because there's a little bit of a better image on that video because when i made that video i fully gutted my van out so you could actually see the frame itself so go check it out for van storage i have these great little fold lid containers underneath my bed and the great thing is is that they fit perfectly width wise between the braces and how I secure them in is a bungee cord attached to a little, where is it there? Attached to a little eye screw. And they just click in there. And it's the same on the front and the back. And it holds itself pretty well. For my dog water and food dish, you kind of had to be creative on where you're going to put it. Um, people have given me suggestions and sent me video links of things that other people in vans have done. 
with putting like a boot tray on the bottom to keep it from spilling and stuff and it was just taking up way too much floor space in the van and when you're in here your floor space is so valuable so let me show you what I did it's kind of cool and pretty simple on this side of the bowl here there's a screw into the floor it's not going into the metal it's just going into my flooring and on this side it's just underneath this hold on. it's just wedged underneath this trim piece this trim piece I haven't screwed down since I put the floor in but the cool thing is is that this it's kind of solid it's in there but this rotates out so I can clean underneath it and when you slide it back just keep it underneath and it's in there pretty good it's pretty sweet The flooring in the van is actually an aftermarket piece of rubber flooring with a foam bottom and it's fully completely cut to the floor and it fit just so perfectly. It was a little bit more expensive. I'm probably sh pretty sure I could have done a cheaper job if I would have done my own flooring. But when I got into the van, I was still living into my condo and the first thing I wanted to do was just get a proper floor in here and that's what I did. It cost me about 400 bucks or something like that. I'll put the link in the description down below. It's from a company called Van Tread or Van Bed or something like that. And I picked it up off of um, off eBay and it you know, came pretty quick. It actually came from a Canadian supplier and there was tons of American suppliers, but the problem with me being in Canada is then there's duties and time and I didn't have the time because I was jumping into this lifestyle so damn fast. But this floor has been pretty badass. little wall unit <laughs> here's why I built it the way I built it I built it this way because for one it was super damn cheap and it got me something to store my stuff on and get things up off the floor is this permanent no do I plan on building my van out at some point yes when I first started this I just wanted to show everybody that you could get into this lifestyle without spending all this money on building monster cabinets and doing all this crazy electrical stuff. So I jumped into it and over the past handful of months, you know, things have just kind of evolved in the van. You know, as I've kind of been living in it a little longer, I'm starting to learn where things belong in the van. And I think that's the problem with people who actually get the van, build it, then go start the lifestyle because how do you know what you need? How do you know where things should go that feel the best and is more f the most functional? I still move things around in the van because I mean lately I've been pondering you know possibly building it out because I have a really good friend of mine named Terrence that he's he's got the skills, the space and and he's got the heart he wants to do it so bad and it's at the point where I'm thinking maybe before summer I might build the van out you know just you know not crazy crazy but build it out so it's a little bit more functional and has a lot more storage because all this space that's up top here is unused storage space and that's the thing about doing this is that you know the more stuff you got on the floor the more living space you have that's not available so by building things out simple like this you know I think is a great idea I mean you don't have to like build the cabinet thing like I did but just using simple storage containers yeah let's go take a closer look all right these little storage containers they're just plastic shelves nothing fancy the little snap little thing on the top they're pretty basic you know you don't have to put this kind of stuff on top I did you know it was makeshift all this is is a shelf right here that I got it was like a eight foot shelf I got at Home Depot and they cut it down to the width that I needed and also cut some extra pieces so I can make this shelf to hold my, my my stove and I just bent these little clips it works it's makeshift but you know it's functional and it was super cheap like and I bought these little boxes off of Craigslist on the top and I just simply screwed everything into everything 
it's not 100% solid and sure one day it's probably gonna bust into pieces, but on that day is gonna be the day that I'm just gonna build a proper wall unit. Right now it's functional and it works and all the L brackets are all kind of hidden behind everything, but it's all L bracketed to this bar. This bar is like screwed to the walls. So everything is L bracketed to this and also screwed to the floor. So it's fairly secure. But this isn't even important. It's a total gong show in here right now. But, you know, who cares about the details on that kind of stuff? That's the stuff that you guys can build as you go. Even if it's just stacking those little plastic cabinets and strapping them together or something. Whatever gets you into the lifestyle and living it, that's all that matters. What else do you guys want to see? Water. For water, things are pretty basic in here. Simply just have a large water jug here that I usually just tip out and pour into whatever Disco kind of needs. I bought a new water jug which I haven't put into use yet. The garbage can is also up front here. Everything you see there on the front seat is, well, I just need to clean the back up a little bit. So look good in video. Now the gong shows up front. But that's what I'm using for water right now and it works. Um, the new big jug that I bought, I have a plan for it, but that's not gonna be for you know at least another couple of weeks. And uh, before the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a rundown of, of, of what I have felt so far that I think I'm gonna change when I fully build a van home. Let's go take a look in the back of the van. I don't wanna show you this because this is like real life living in the van crap. But I do have space in the back of the van that I use to haul DJ gear right now. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, full of stuff. So what I did in the back of the van here, let me take some stuff out of here. Here's the big water jug I bought the other day. Some of my jackets. All right, tell you what, let's just move all this stuff on top of the bed. My gym bag. Okay, in the back of the van, you can access the boxes and stuff like that. Um, in the summer, I've kept this thing pretty clean. Like when I first started, started van life, because this stuff isn't always in here. It's kind of like my DJ gear that I use on the weekends. But it's super cool because, you know, I've got extra space on the side. I got a, at least a couple of a two and a half feet in the back of extra storage space. But back here also works really well. Like when you're out here in the summer, you know, when you're sitting out at the beach, crack your back doors open. This makes a great little like beach couch. It's pretty awesome. And you drag a pillow down, put it back there. It's like an awesome beach couch. You sit back there. It's, it's pretty rad but the back of it's pretty much a gong show right now. And I use this little bar here as well for um, my jackets and stuff. But yeah, it's a gong show in here right now. That's what happens when you actually live in a van, work in a van, and you need place to store extra, extra stuff. Yeah. You end up just kind of just throwing it in the back. And for storage and stuff that's underneath the bed, my front two boxes are clothing the next two boxes back one of them is like a miscellaneous junk box with like jumper cables and stuff like that the other one's kind of like the same thing it's got like my hammock and some stuff that i won't be using until probably summertime and the last two boxes that are accessible back here one is my laundry bin the other one's full of converse shoes sweet All the lighting and stuff I have in my van, well, it's all kind of changed right now because since I put up the new insulation on the roof, I still have to re-put the lighting and stuff up top. But I just use these little push lights. They're pretty simple. You know, I used to have one mounted right above my bed, so if I'm ever sitting here, we're doing some work on the computer, I got access to lights. Other than that, I'm just using Christmas lights that are battery powered. You simply just click them on. At some point, I'm going to mount these right here on the wall, but for now, I've just been tucking them up there. But it's pretty cool. Like, you run the Christmas lights around. Hold on. That's really all I got for lighting. And then a few little push lights, which I'll get up probably in the next week or so. Like, I had just, they're just like little round push lights, much like this one. I had one above my cooler so I could kind of see what's going on in the cooler, one above my bed, one by the back door, pretty basic stuff. And you know, honestly, people freak out and worry, well, I need lights, I need this, I need that, I need this. Guys, these little push lights, they do just fine. 
I myself am not the kind of person that's going to stay cooped up in the van all day long for like a week on end. So when it comes to lighting stuff, I just need the basics at night. Because if anything, if I'm in the van, I'm just watching a movie, doing some video editing. I'm not really in there doing anything else really. So the need for like full lighting is not needed. These little AA batteries have lasted in those Christmas lights for, shoot, two weeks now? It's just still kicking. They're, they're not as bright right now. They could use to be changed, but they're still kicking. The one that's above the door here, I have even left that thing on all night one night by accident, and it still works. So you're not gonna chew through batteries a ton. So if you look at it, I would rather be running some AA batteries in here than spending all that money and crazy stuff on electrical that I feel that I really haven't needed. I don't think I'm gonna go crazy if I ever end up doing electrical down the line, but for now, I have no need for it, and I don't think it's gonna be happening anytime soon. Here's what I do for charging my laptop and stuff. I just got a 400 watt little power inverter that's mounted just right up on the dash and I plug it in my cigarette lighter. So when I'm driving, it charges my laptop. I've had no problems at all with having a lack of power. And if I happen to have needed some extra power while I'm editing a video, I just start the van for a little bit, you know? But for the most part, that very rarely, rarely happens. You know, I mean, we do enough driving around, going to different locations and you know, back and to and from like DJ gigs and stuff that, you know, I have access to enough electricity and power that I don't need to spend, you know, the thousand dollars on batteries and all that other crazy stressful stuff and I don't need it. And I think that a lot of people getting into this lifestyle don't need to go too crazy on it. You know, you think about it now, but when the time comes, do you actually really need that kind of power? Sure, there's going to be some other factors into play, whether you're going to need battery banks and stuff. Like if you plan on putting in, in like a roof vent that requires a battery, that's a little bit different. But still at that point, you can go pretty simple on that and just throw the battery in it and link it to your alternator and keep it super basic. You know, especially if you're just starting, because you can add all that stuff as you go down the line. Or like me now in the position that I'm in, you know, I've, I've been in the van long enough that I finally know that if I build it, where things need to go. And that is huge. Like even just as of last week, I'm still discovering that, hey, if I put this here, it's so much more convenient. So I was sitting in my van doing some video editing the other day, and I was just kind of thinking. You know, while I'm sitting right here, pondering like, hey, how can I make this space a bit more functional when I build it? So, on this side here where normally where my propane tank was, you know, I've seen van builds where they've put the island that fully covered the door and when I seen those videos I was like, yeah, no, definitely not for me. <laughs> well, because I kept my van at a basic simple build, it still allows me to move things around and really kind of get a good feel of what I actually need. So, the other week I moved my cooler right over here against the door and kind of had kind of where Disco is sitting right now. You comfy, bud? <laughs> and I put my cooler there just to see if, you know, hey, does this take up too much room? How's the space in the van? And it was actually kind of awesome. So I think when I actually do end up building it, I'm going to build a little island here that partially covers the door. And right here on this side of the island, I'm gonna put a little folding tabletop here that I can actually use to edit my videos on. And when I'm done, it just folds away. I think I'm gonna mount my my new heater I got to the other side of it on the inside which gets it up off the floor keeps things looking nice and clean and since I bought this new badass water jug here's what I was thinking I was thinking inside of that cabinet inside of the island cabinet because the island cabinet will come out to about about here I was gonna put my cooktop on the top right I mean obviously at that point all that stuff would be demolished and a proper cabinet would be built but I, I can put my cooktop here because I don't use it very often. I will keep my double burner one, but I'll buy a single one just for here, just for quick stuff, you know what I mean? Quick on the fly. Or I might even buy one of those little two burner built-in ones so I can screw it into the cabinet, which would actually be really, really nice. And put that here. And the cool thing is, is have the water jug so it just slides in and out of the cabinet. And it's awesome because when I want to fill Disco's dish, 
any spillage is just gonna go here and then out the van, making things a lot more cleaner. I thought that would be pretty damn sweet. So guys, look, that's another major benefit about living in it before you build it. And I'm telling you guys, I preach that in just about everything I talk about in my videos when it comes to building your van out. Go live in it for a while, whether it's doing what I did and full, full time live in it before you build it, or at least take off for a couple of weeks so you truly, honestly know exactly what you need. I'm telling you, like if, if I would have built it before and I realized that I should have built an island, I'd have been kind of screwed because if I would have had something built here, now I would have had to, to have demolished it to make it functional for me. Doing it this way, guys, I'm telling you, is the key, the key, the key, the key, the key. Live in it first. Truth, full blown truth. And that's gonna be it for this one. Just a little bit of a closer look at what's going on inside of my super, super, super simple van build. I'm gonna get into heating and insulation and all that stuff into another video. So watch out for that one. It should be out in probably another couple of days. Um, I wanna wait for a little bit because we're getting into a bit of a colder week before I even talk about the new heater that I just got. And I'd like to include that one in my insulation video because um, yeah, talking all that blah, blah, blah stuff is kind of not that exciting for me. So, you know, I know people get excited. They really want to know about, you know, insulation and heating stuff. But for me, it's not overly an exciting topic. So, but we're going to save that all for one video. So give me probably three, four, five days to get that one out to you. But then you guys will know how the new Olympian Wave 3 is working out, how the insulation is doing working out in cold weather. Not really cold. Vancouver, look at man, this is summer day right now here in the middle of winter. It's not quite summer day, but the weather is like probably three, four degrees today. It's beautiful out. Like I just got like a thin little shirt on. <laughs> Anyway, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching and being with us. Please support us on Patreon. Go check it out. The link's in the description down below. And thank you to all my Patreons. You guys rock. You guys are great. If you want to get some van life apparel, um, it's not branded with my channel or anything. It's just generic van life apparel. Check out the link in the description. I'm still yet to receive mine. Should hopefully be coming in soon. Hurry up. I got to wait longer than you guys because it ships from the United States. Oh, problems we have here in Canada. I right, guess. Stay weird. Adios. Wait a minute, hold up, hold up. I forgot about my cooler. I have a Pelican cooler. I don't know what else to say. It's a Pelican cooler and it holds ice. When they claim it holds ice for like seven days or 10 days or whatever it is, that's pretty damn true. That thing can keep my beer cold for a solid week, no problem. I put one block of ice in there and one single bag of ice. Usually the block will last the full 10 days and the single bag, well, I use the single bag because it covers my beer and keeps it, you know, cold. Pretty badass, you know, and for those people that want to put in like all this electrical stuff for a fridge, I don't need it. Pelican cooler just damn well works. All right, let's get back to the montage of where we are. It's just beautiful. Yeah.